This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stick around to the end to learn how you can learn or improve a skill with a limited time free trial. Maybe learn some video editing magic like this, huh? Whoa! Look at that! Gen 4 is a generation, but why was it so weird? I've been doing a lot of Gen 4 themed videos, if you haven't noticed, and it's all because of the Gen 4 hype train! Choo choo! What was that? Oh, oh, the hype train is on some rough railing, but it hasn't crashed yet. All aboard the algorithm train! Generation 4 added and removed many features from mainline Pokemon games. It was supposed to be the ultimate game. The end of the era, to say. The end of a story of sorts they had in mind. I mean, the whole story does come to a nice end here. The evil organization wants to destroy the galaxy, and the ultimate god Pokemon gets released. And boom! Now what are you gonna do? The stakes have been raised! Once you release god, how are you gonna create a challenge to that. Oh, a Zubat filled cave. Hmm. I know. I'll use God to clear it out. Nice. But what I want to figure out today is why they thought the 29 Pokemon that got evolutions were not finished prior to Gen 4. And interestingly, they haven't really done cross-gen evolutions since, unless you count, like, regional variants, but I don't. So, 29 whole entire Pokemon got an extra evolution in this generation. And in interviews, Game Freak claimed that this was because they wanted to finish old ideas they had. But is that true? Is there maybe some meta involved? Nobody used Pile of Swine competitively, so they made it evolve into something good? Is it for the challenge? Is it for theming? Uh, there's probably a lot of reasons, so let's just go down the decks. Magnezone is one of my favorites from this generation. The evolution was added to the Magnemite family as the final evo, so what was wrong with the line? What did they add to it? Well, I will say that Magnemite to Magneton is a bad evolution. It doesn't even get bigger, it's just more of them. So as a final evo, Magneton is pretty weak, and Magnezone zone. Well, it's much better. It's got the same motifs as the previous ones and adds onto it with the whole alien UFO bit. Plus, at the time, Magnezone was pretty great in the meta. Magnet Paul is oh so tasty. I'm not sure about this next one. Licky Licky? Ew? Uh, why would they even think this is a better idea? It's pretty generic, competitively, being an okay answer to all of these special attackers in its tier. But even so, it's not like it was drastically needed. It's never actually used. I mean, I guess it could be for the anime or movie. Licky Licky was pretty prominent in the Darkrai movie. Maybe that's why they needed it. Rhyperior is another one of the lamer Pokemon added in Gen 4, in my and most people's opinion. I mean, it's just wearing an ugly vest. Why did we need this minor appearance change for a Rhino? Well, it does fit into the whole mining town aesthetic that a few towns in Sinnoh have, but so does regular Rhydon. And plus, Rhyperior is not found natively. It's a trade evolution. So maybe it was added for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, specifically for Blues rematch fight. In fact, many things on this list are going to be here because of the Gen 2 remakes happening at the same time. It's another reason why Magnezone was added, to fill in all the better and stronger teams of the gym leaders during the rematch fight, or the Elite Four. Other Pokemon who I believe are in the same boat as Rhyperior, just being stronger versions of the Prevo, for the sake of the gyms and such. Tangrowth, it's just Erika's Tangela, but stronger, along with Roserade. Electivire and Magnezone, those are Lieutenant Surge's Pokemon. Magmortar, it's Blaine's signature Pokemon now. Sabrina is a bit different, since her main Pokemon is already fully evolved, uh, so instead she gains a Gallade, which could be why it's here, but more on Gallade later. The Gen 4 also added a lot of baby Pokemon, like Happini. Now personally, I didn't think that the Chansey line was lacking, but I guess Game Freak thought so. Or maybe it was the anime department. If I recall, Happini was a fun addition to the gang during the anime, with Brock hatching it, and also the whole line had a theme of motherly love and care, and uh, Happini wasn't needed, but but it isn't reduced by Happini's addition. You see, it's the whole little girls caring for toy babies thing, acting like a mother. Happini even has a fake egg that it uses like a baby doll. Bonsly was also added for the baby arc in the anime. Brock's whole deal was that he was a gym leader, but he wants to become a breeder. And now, in Gen 4, he is finally a fully-fledged breeder, as was shown by all of these baby mon he's got. His character development needed a conclusion, since he wasn't going to play a part in the next generation. So, here's a load a baby Pokemon, and Bonsly specifically was part of the gang for a while. In addition, Bonsly was basically out since before Gen 3 even. This Pokemon was definitely a leftover from Gen 2, but cut due to storage space, like plenty of other babies too. And again, since Gen 2 remakes were planned, well why not just add them back? Mantyke is another Gen 2 family baby Evo added, because
because the idea that it needs the Remoraids on it just wasn't clear enough. Gotta bump that idea up, so much to the point where it won't evolve unless there's a Remoraid in your party. Showing off that mutualism, Munchlax is another anime friend, with that whole appearing before Gen 4 thing also. It was a big character in the Gen 3 anime. May caught one, and it was around for quite a while. Plus, there's the Destiny Deoxys movie role it had. It was a much needed comic relief character. It really makes you think that Pokemon isn't just a game anymore. It's like a huge multimedia franchise, and all the Pokemon designers need to keep all of that in mind. Mine Jr. was probably also added for the sake of the anime, and thus, unfortunately, it had to also be added to the games. James had one who was used for a lot of comic relief, you see. Chingling, though, is an odd one to add. It wasn't really prominent in the anime, so my guess is that it must have been added to finish off the line's motif, and it does. Being a Suzu Bell really brings home the Japanese Shinto Shrine vibe the line has. But Badoo was also released before the generation it was released in, causing some confusion. But it wasn't too prominent in the anime or any movies, so why did they think they needed to add this baby mon? Maybe because Roselia was just that lacking. It's in my top 20 least favorite Pokemon. It needs a new Evo and a new baby. Maybe then people will finally remember it. On its own, it's just one of those incredibly forgettable mon. Leafeon and Glaceon. Gen 4 was the time they split the moves into physical and special categories, rather than those being tied to the types. And ice and grass were the only special types left for EV evolutions, other than dragon, but dragon is too gross for an EV. I got a whole video about this theory. Plus, Gen 4 had a bunch of location-based evolutions, including these. Porygon Z is one of the very few evolutions on this list that isn't just a bigger version of the smaller ones that were added. My theory right now is that Porygon Z wasn't really designed with any other intent than to build the better picture of Team Garlic. The Lactic. Its programming was a way to explain the team's dark science. And on top of that, the whole alien dimension aspect of this Pokemon's dex entries, and Team Galactic's whole other world death to this one deal, it really shows off a lot about this mon. I mean, you can't even get it without stuff in Team Galactic's base. Jesse's Yon Mega possibly paved the way for this evolution, though it could be seen as just a better Yanma, which honestly looked like a small form Pokemon at the time. Gen 2 had a decent amount of these single chain basic Pokemon. No evolutions, which also means less toys to sell. And it does suck to have a Pokemon you love not get better or cooler Evos. And actually, I think that's what happens to a lot of these Pokemon. So Game Freak's claim of adding these new evolutions is to finish the lines off is a valid one. Murkrow, Misdreavus, Apom, Gligar, and Yanma all share this theme of being younger looking Mon. The basic stage of a lot of Pokemon are smoother, larger eyed, rounder, it almost always is a cute Mon. Not the edgy, finished designs. But then when we look at some basic Pokemon that don't evolve, like Zangoose and Seviper, Tropius, Duraludon, they seem large or bigger and have sharper shapes, or are totally filled to the brim with finishing touches. Tauros, Drampa, Phalanx, all of these Pokemon seem finished. You could add more, but then they might look over-designed. And then we look at little Pokemon that only evolve once. We see themes here, like Cubchoo to Beartick, or Ekans to Arbok. They just become larger versions with more details. I, for one, wouldn't like just an Ekans by itself, or a Cubchu by itself. They are so generic and simple, and yet their evolutions could easily be by themselves because they look finished. This is probably why they added a good amount of details to each of these Pokemon, finishing the designs out, giving them that edge to make them look cool. And speaking of cool, Weavile and Mamoswine I believe follow the same rule, however they did definitely need more cold ice type Pokemon. Pokemon for Sinnoh. Actually, same for Frostlass. However, they also added in the whole female part because Glalie is a much more masculine Pokemon, and also there's the whole Yuki Ona Ice Woman Yokai thing. These next three are in an odd group. Gallade wasn't needed, but I mean, he's cool. And I guess they wanted a more masculine final Evo for Curlia because femboys are illegal. But actually, I think it's more along the lines of they wanted a prince for the princess. Actually, this whole region has a historical feel to it. Many of the Mon added were of older origins, like Gallade and his knightly Earl Duke look, or Bronzong, Spiritu, Lucario. All of them are based on older mythos. Even the movies featuring Gen 4 seem older or have old architecture, castles, and ancient cities and such.
knowledge. And because of that, they needed to add some more classical looking Pokemon to show how there were even older Mon around, like with Probopass and Dusk Noir. It shows that the Pokemon world has history and goes back a long time. I guess Nose Pass just wasn't cool enough for you, huh? They just had to give it a hat and a sick mustache. But it was also a design addition based on new information at the time of the Easter Island heads. Around the time of these games' development, it was discovered that these Easter Island heads had hats. Not all of them, but plenty. So boom, new Evo to reference that. That's cool. And then finally, Dusk Noir. Let's be honest, it's way better than Dusklops, but it still doesn't compare to the best boy Dusko. Dusk Noir is loosely based on the personification of Death, the Grim Reaper, and Yon Yamawato, which some say are just Kappa of the mountains. And if we look at Sinnoh, we can definitely see mountains, so it fits. But why did they need to add it? Well, I'm gonna go with Dusklops' trash final answer. I can't believe it! Oh! Oh! We did it! Oh man! Oh jeez! Oh thank you! Oh! It is I, the sponsor fairy wizard, bringing you a blessing from today's sponsor, Skillshare. What a good sponsor they are, because Team Noggin actually uses them. Knitting. Social media managing courses. Knitting. Alright, I admit it's me. Knitting. Yeah, we've joined the already millions of users on Skillshare every day. The lifelong learners, the real hardworking creatives, and the business professionals. And I, as a sponsor fairy wizard, have taken a part in productivity optimization, tips and tools for automating your workflows by Kevin Siskar. And oh man, I've always been a workaholic, and this will give me so much more time to do more work in. <laughs> hey! Plus, he even goes over how to actually see if your automation is actually worth it, and if it's worth doing more. I quite enjoyed it, as learning a new skill is easy and neat nowadays, but understanding how that skill affects you is why I always love to learn from Skillshare. And they are adding premium quality courses constantly, and all ad-free too. Because who wants to be distracted during the learning process? Yes, it is a sponsor fairy wizard free zone! I have no skills of which to speak of. And hey, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a trial of their premium membership for free. It's amazing. Magical even. So again, link below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, never stop learning new skills with your noggin. Let me know if that was dumb.